Hello everyone, welcome to the video. Today we're looking at habits, how we build good ones and specifically how they affect our exercise and health goals. Although having said that, you could apply the knowledge and tips in this video to any good habit you want to build or bad habit you want to break. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give you five strategies to make sure your good habits really stick. At the time of making this video, the UK has just spent eight weeks in lockdown. And I'm sure a lot of you have picked up some bad habits along the way. Maybe you're staying up later, drinking more alcohol, or you've doubled your biscuit intake. And I'm sure most of us have been a lot less active than we otherwise would have been. Whatever your circumstances, I'm sure there's some things you're gonna take away from this video. So let's get on with it. Firstly, what is a habit? Your brain wants to be efficient. It wants to make life easy for you. A habit is an action or a sequence of actions your brain essentially puts on autopilot. Habits are things like putting your car seatbelt on or brushing your teeth before you go to bed. Things you just do without really thinking about it. We define habits as good or bad depending on their influence on our long-term goals. Looking left and right before you cross a road is good because it keeps you alive. Inhaling a share bag of crisps in 15 seconds is bad because it adds 600 extra calories to your daily intake. Any habit, good or bad, is formed by repeating three stages over and over again. Trigger, ritual and reward. A trigger, or cue, is something that signals your brain to initiate the habit. A popular application of this in terms of exercise is to put your workout clothes out the night before somewhere nice and prominent so you see them as soon as you wake up in the morning. This is a visual cue to your brain to get up and get ready and not hit the snooze button. The ritual is you then performing the action or series of actions. Initially there'll be some thought involved in this but with repetition the behaviour becomes learned and you know this has happened when you start to daydream or start to multitask. Finally, every single habit has a reward and this is fundamental for turning motivated actions into learned habits. The reward could be internal, such as feeling better after going for a run or having a good catch up with your gym buddy. The reward could also be external, such as money or even treating yourself to some new gear. A special note on diet related habits. Many people think that snacking and overindulging are rewarded by the taste of the food or drink itself. And this is often the case, but sometimes the reward is something else. Maybe you use getting up to go snack hunting as a reason to have a break from your work because it's doing your head in, or it's the novelty of a fizzy drink rather than its alcohol or caffeine content. Look at your bad habits and maybe try substituting for less detrimental food and drink. No, it won't taste the same, but you will get used to it. Building good habits takes action at the fickle hands of conscious thought and automate the sometimes uncomfortable behaviours that are beneficial to our long-term goals. If you're enjoying this, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So here are my five strategies for building good habits and making them stick. Number one is to find your why. Before you start building good habits, you need to clarify why you want to change your behavior at all. Maybe it's for health reasons, or maybe it's for a specific goal, race or trip. You can take this a step further by setting a smart goal. Now this is a big topic and I won't go into it here, but if you would like a separate video on effective goal setting, then let me know down in the comments. All I'll say for now is give your goal as much detail as you can and just be honest with yourself. My second strategy is to start small. It's important with any habit not to bite off more than you can chew. Trying to make 10 big changes all at once isn't going to end well. For example, if one day you wake up at 5am, run, go vegetarian, strength train, read 50 pages of a book, meditate and start doing yoga, you're not going to do it all again the next day. Likewise, setting a goal indefinitely with no respite is going to leave you feeling deflated when you eventually need a day off. So only pick one or two goals to start with and plan how you're going to manage them and if and when you're going to take days off. 
For example, aim to wake up at 6am every day, but only for two weeks to start with. A method I like for exercise goals is one I pinched off Matt Diavella, who is a YouTuber, podcaster and minimalist, and it's called the two day rule. Basically, you can't take two days off from your habit in a row. This means you can do your habit daily when your feelings and circumstances allow, but also take multiple days off a week if need be. What it prevents is turning two days off into three days off into a week off into not building a habit. I will add that despite all this for a big goal like a race or expedition, sitting down and planning your training roadmap is really important to make sure that your fitness is where it needs to be in time. A good training plan will build gradually in volume so you adapt to the training stimulus and don't get sick or injured. And segue, if you'd like to find out more about how Rise Fitness can support you in your training, click the link in the description to learn more about our services. My third strategy is your identity. Think about this scenario. You're a smoker and someone offers you a cigarette. The two obvious responses are, no thanks, I'm trying to quit, or no thanks, I'm not a smoker. The first is the identity of someone who is trying to stop. And the second is someone who's already adopted the identity of a non-smoker, even if they're not quite there yet. Now, repeat after me. I am an athlete. Did you laugh? Chances are, if you're a recreational exerciser, you probably feel a bit silly calling yourself an athlete. But you shouldn't. If you engage in regular focused exercise, whether you are doing your local park run every week or driving across the country for a race, you are an athlete. Still not convinced? Fake it till you make it. Try it for a few days and see how it changes your attitude. Number four is control your environment. This is a big one. Your environment has a huge impact on your mental state. Remember our three stages from earlier. Triggers are the first step to any habit, good or bad. If your home or workplace is full of triggers for good habits, those are more likely to stick. And if it's full of triggers for bad habits, those are gonna be harder to get rid of. As we said earlier, a big one for exercise is having your clothes or gym kit ready and visible in the morning or for when you get home from work. I'm rubbish at finding time to do my soft tissue work. So I leave my foam roller out in front of the kettle. So when I come down in the morning, I can do my soft tissue work while the kettle's boiling and while my tea's brewing. It gets it out of the way first thing and means that I brew my tea properly. On a similar note, going back to our find your why point, putting a photo related to your main goal is a great reminder of what it's all for. I find the fridge door is the prime place for this, especially for diet related goals. However, if you're trying to eat less of a certain food, the best course of action is to simply not have it in the house. Yes, it might suck when you get those after dinner cravings, but if it's not there, you can't indulge. End of. My final strategy is to make yourself, someone else or something else accountable. This could simply be explaining to your partner, family or friend what it is you're trying to achieve. Confide in that person and they'll help keep you on track if and when you start to waver. You could take this a step further by convincing them to join you in your habit acquisition, but of course only do this if they're willing. Another method is to use one of the many habit tracker apps to encourage and monitor your progress. Here are a couple of my favourites. First off, Habitify. This app has lots of nice features and a really simple interface. Easy. The second is BeMinder. This app actually allows you to pledge money on doing your habits and you can link a ton of other apps to help track your progress. If you've made it to the end of this video, you clearly have something you're keen to change. The motivation is there. All you need to do now is sit down and plan out how you're going to build those habits that are going to make your goals a reality. I hope this video has been useful for you. Do let me know down in the comments what habits you're trying to build, how you're doing, and if you've got any questions. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.